Hey, how's it going? I'm Ryan. I'm Zach. And we're here today on another episode of Influences. Who we got today, Zach? The Rolling Stones. Uh, Rolling Stones are one of the greatest rock and roll bands of all time to a lot of people. Uh, depending. Most influential, of course. Very influential. Very, um, you know, when you think of rock and roll, you think of the Rolling Stones or Led Zeppelin. Rolling Stones, rock and roll. Roll, rolling, stones, rock, and... Indeed. And uh, with the Rolling Stones, you know, there's a uh, quite a body of work as far as the hits. Um, and they span four decades, I'll shoot five decades now. The Rolling Stones have been around for about 50 years now. And uh, 50 plus, wow. It's a long time for a band to still be uh, active in, in some configuration or another, but uh, for our purposes, we're looking at basically three lineups of the Rolling Stones, which originally you had the uh, Mick Jagger, Keith Richards, Charlie Watts, Bill Wyman, um, which is the lineup that continued on, but the fifth member uh, kind of shifted a little bit throughout the years and uh, the first fifth member was Brian Jones and that was the era of all their early hits and their uh, humble beginnings. Painted Black. Painted Black, uh, Mother's Little Helper, Let's Spend the Night Together, uh, Sympathy for the Devil, um, some of their greatest songs, Under My Thumb, uh, Jumping Jack Flash, the list goes on and on. Um, unfortunately, right around 60, 1967, Brian Jones died, um, and uh, that's when they brought in Mick Taylor on the lead guitar. Mick Taylor was uh, a really fine addition to the band, and it brought he, him and Keith Richards as a dual guitar trade-off. Um, that's where you have you know, the era that yielded songs like Brown Sugar and you know, songs off Sticky Fingers and Exile on Main Street. Um, what are some of your favorites from, from that era? Uh, you like Bitch and Tumble and Dice, um, you know, Wild Horses and, um, oh my God, there's just so many. Um, happy and oh my god and then configuration number three after Brian I'm sorry I'm sorry Mick Taylor left the fold that's when they got Ron Wood and so with Ron Wood you got the last uh, couple great Rolling Stones albums with uh, some girls which uh, my favorite Rolling Stones album sets uh, miss you beast of burden some girls you know and, uh, and also uh, Tattoo You, which in my opinion was the last great Rolling Stones album, 1981, uh, accompanied by a tour um, where they, uh, you know, they toured with the, with the big hits of uh, Start Me Up, Hang Fire, Waiting on a Friend, um, Little T and A, and, and all those songs from that album. So, from that point, the Rolling Stones kind of became like a Disney World type organization. They were just so huge. Um, after the you know the the 80s got underway, that uh, you know there's there's different uh, arguments of, of peop, you know songs people like by them after that point. But for for me personally, uh, that's about as far as I would go. Uh, in terms of investigating their albums, um, but there, you know, as far as influencing us, what what is it about the Stones that really influences you, Zach? What is it? How you can imagine Michael McDonald singing over it. <laughs> oh. That was beautiful. Yeah. There's something about it that's just. Mm accessible but not really in a mainstream way it's more of an just like 
it's like water. Michael it's McDonald good. singing Give Me Shelter would be a pretty wonderful thing, wouldn't it? <laughs> you just about any Rolling Stones song. Okay, sorry, we got a little off track there. Um, what, are, what are your favorite Stones songs? Miss You, you know, Give Me Shelter, Angie, Paint It Black. Beast of Burden. Yeah, I, I would have to concur. With the, there's so many. There's just so many great songs. Um, can't you hear me knocking? The albums Sticky Fingers, Exile on Main Street, and Some Girls are phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. There's a little period, of, like I said, when Mick Taylor joined the band. You know, Brian Jones was still on hand for. Uh, Let It Bleed, I believe, or, yeah, Let It Bleed, and um, Beggar's Banquet, I could be wrong, I, I'm not sure if it was Brian Jones or Mick Taylor on Let It Bleed, maybe somebody out there can look that up, but, but there was a little streak of albums, Beggar's Banquet, Let It Bleed, Sticky Fingers, Exile on Main Street, and even some of uh, It's Only Rock and Roll, where Holy cow, what a streak of albums. Um, and any one of those albums would yield a, a significant amount of hits. And the thing about the Rolling Stones back in those days is that their sessions would bleed into the next session where... Like a lot of old artists, you know, like um, the reason Houses of the Holy is not on Houses of the Holy for Led Zeppelin is because during the sessions for that, they had leftover songs that they later on decided to use for other let's, albums. Yeah, let's know? put this on the next album. That's uh, The Stones did that a lot. The Beatles did that very much. And uh, that's back in the day, you know, you only had about uh, 42 minutes to work with on an album. So if you wrote an hour's worth of music, some would be put out on a B-side or some would be saved for the next album and so on and so forth. Anyhow, the Stones, for me, first of all, their, their choruses are the best choruses in rock and roll, in my opinion. I don't think anybody does a chorus better. Like, you can't always get what you want. I, I mean, Jumpin' Jack Flash, just, just go down the list, Sympathy for the Devil, Pleased to Meet You, Hope You Get My, I mean, their choruses are just as memorable as it gets. Um, but more than anything, for, for me personally, um, you know, there's, there's stylistically they're a little, you know, blues driven and you, I really don't see where Wide Tracks music is all that influenced by it, but I feel very um, influenced by Mick Jagger's Focus. approach to vo vocal, vocalize. I mean, he's just very passionate and uh, more um, concerned with uh, precision in the studio than people give him credit for. They think it's just a big drunken melee and he just puts it on tape, but it's actually some of the, you know, if you get on YouTube and listen to the vocal track for Gimme Shelter, for instance, it's really, really good. Um, and the other thing I really like about the Stones, especially once Ron Wood got in the band, you listen to Miss You, or Beast of Burden is a great example of the way the two guitars interplay with each other. And uh, they're never playing the same thing. They're using two guitars to great effect. And that is something I'm very much influenced by and having uh, Brian and I working um, and being very adamant about the idea like, hey, I've got this space covered. What do you, you got that space covered and you got this. And we try to kind of each have our own thing going in it and weave it together the stones are great at that and then you've got the bass doing a whole other thing which is very nice so um, but uh, all in all you know they're they're just they've stood the test of time and um, you know they're very loose with it you know the, the, I think it bears being mentioned that Keith Richards um, you know, there's the mythology of Keith Richards, that he is just this heroin addict, whiskey guzzling. Um, Which, yeah, he, though it's he, true to a degree. But, um, 
to you. You know, and people wonder, I wonder how this guy is alive. Yeah. Uh, there are still some very good lessons to be learned. One, don't do that. Two, <laughs> during, I can't remember what time period it was, he decided music was more important. Yeah, he said that, that during the, the making of uh, Exile on Main Street. That's what, it, that's, you're right. He said, this is, a, this is affecting the music and I can't have that. And that, amen, Keith. And that's why Keith Richards is still here, is because the music's the most important thing to him, despite the image. And, and I look at uh, artists like uh, Scott Weiland and, uh, you know, Lane Staley, and they didn't, they weren't so lucky, but, you know, sometimes the mythology overshadows the brilliance of the artistry, and, you know, I look at someone like, like I said, like, like Scott Weiland, he gets unfairly judged for just being a junkie. The guy was a was one of the best vocalists of his generation, and Keith Richards is what for what he does, he's phenomenal. He writes songs that are timeless, um, and he's still here. You know, he's still showing up, doing his thing, and that is that's influential. That that to us is like put music first. Absolutely have a good time. It's rock and roll. <laughs> you, you gotta have some fun. <laughs> and we'll all get to that one day. But, you know, more than anything. doesn't mean drugs. No, no. No drugs. Rock and roll is its own reward, you know, and, and that's the thing. Drugs the Rolling Stones, when they get on stage, it's, it's, it's almost a ritual. They're, it is a ritual. They get up there and they are in the zone. They are in that rock and roll trance shamanistic kind of display of soul power and how that influences us is what other way is there to do it yeah yeah what other way so anyhow thumbs up to the stones and uh, it's only rock and roll but we like it and uh, till next time keep on rocking